Hey everyone, today we're going to be measuring the coefficient of kinetic friction using the infamous block on a ramp problem from Physics 124. The materials you're going to need for the lab include a ramp. So we need something long and flat that will be able to slide an object down. We'll need something to take the place of our block. In this case, I'm just going to use a can here. We want to make sure it can set up on our ramp here and slide steadily down. And then we're going to need something to measure the distances in the problem with. We'll want to measure the length and the height of the ramp, as well as set the video in our video analysis. Finally, you'll need your smartphone to take a video of the can or whatever sliding down the ramp, making measurements of the acceleration as you go. The final thing is that we're going to be making two measurements. So you're going to want to make sure that you have something to set the ramp up on that you can change the height of. Here I'm using a pot with a liner, and so what that's going to allow me to do is set this up and have it sit at a different angle and measure a different acceleration. The theory for this lab is going to come from a classic Physics 124 problem, namely a block sliding down an inclined plane. The plane is inclined to the horizontal by an angle theta, and we're going to pick a coordinate system x and y that's along, parallel to, and perpendicular to the ramp, as shown here. Given that, we can write down our free body diagram. Here, n is the normal force pushing out of the ramp. U sub k times n is our friction force that is opposing the motion and pointing up the ramp, and then the weight points straight down. Using our coordinate system, we'll break down that weight into a parallel and perpendicular component on the ramp, and we can go ahead and use Newton's second law to write down f equals ma for these two coordinates. So we have along the x-coordinate, we have mg sine theta minus mu k n is equal to m times a, where a is the acceleration down the ramp. The block isn't moving up or down with respect to the ramp, so the acceleration for the block is going to be zero, and so that's going to give us a variable that allow us to eliminate the normal force, and with that we can calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction if we know how the block is accelerating. We can also measure the lengths of the triangle here to determine the trig functions. So this is a key point. We don't know what theta is, but we can figure out what the tangent and cosine of theta are by using trigonometry and the definitions of these trig functions. Tangent theta is just going to be the opposite over adjacent, which is h over l here. And then the cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is square root of l squared plus h squared from the Pythagorean theorem. If we substitute those in to our coefficient of kinetic friction expression, we get the final result that we see here. Our basic approach is going to be to measure these lengths and then use video analysis to determine what the acceleration A is. We will assume that G equals 9.81 meters per second squared in this experiment. To collect data for the lab, we're going to want to set up our ramp. It's fairly straightforward, as you saw at the beginning of the video, but some things you want to keep in mind. I'm putting a little pillow here at the end of my ramp to stop the can from flying off the end. It's going to be accelerating, and you need something to stop it. Now, I also want to make sure that my can is going to slide down continuously. If you get a case where it's not very well inclined, and it's not sliding very effectively, you need to increase the angle so that it's continuously accelerating down the ramp. Finally, we need to go ahead and make measurements of distances. We're going to go ahead and film. So imagine that you're collecting video analysis here with a distance of known length in the frame. You can measure your acceleration as it slides down using video analysis, as we did for lab two. But the other wrinkle is that we're going to need to measure the length of the ramp so measured from where the angle at the end of the ramp is over to the location uh, where we can measure the height. And then we're going to want to measure the perpendicular height from that. So that will give me a length along the table and the height of the triangle. And we're going to use that to calculate the trig and the metric functions of this angle here, theta. When we set up our video analysis, it really helps to have the coordinate system oriented along the ramp. That way, the velocity and acceleration only show up in one of the coordinates. To do this, go ahead and select the Coordinate Axes button here in the Logger Pro uh, 
setup, and then you can click on the location of the ramp and rotate your axes so that it's running down the ramp. Then you can carry on with your setting the distance scale. And finally, you can carry out your video analysis. I'm going to just focus on the corner of this barcode here. Then, when everything is done, we can go ahead and select our data and paste it into a spreadsheet program. We can now go ahead and paste our data into a spreadsheet program. I'm going to go ahead and insert a header row. Uh, so this is the time in the movie uh, for seconds, uh, the x position in meters, the y position in meters, the x uh, velocity in meters per second, and the y velocity in meters per second. I also have several points here where uh, the object is moving, and it's only down here, looking at the x velocity in row 33 or 34, that it really starts to accelerate. So I can go ahead and select all these regions and delete them, uh, leaving me only with the time in the movie. And uh, I'm going to create a time since release column. Uh, again, that'll be in seconds. And I'll just say that this is the time in the movie minus the first time. So uh, I can actually anchor that by saying $A, $2 in my entry, and that'll leave this fixed for when I copy and paste this on down. It'll just subtract that all off. So now we're all set to make a plot of my x-coordinate and my t-coordinate here, and I can go ahead and insert a chart. Uh, I go ahead and do that. I will want a scatter chart. I will want a scatter chart. I will want the time since release to be the x axis, so I'll use that as the time since release. And I can go ahead and include all my uh, fits and everything from that. The next thing we'll want to do is to do a linear fit to the vx as a function of time. So we just say that we want Linus uh, for that x velocity, that's the y data of the graph, even though it's the x velocity, and then we're going to go ahead and fit that against the x axis, and as ever we'll want to type true, comma true, because we want to fit the y intercept and get our full set of stats, and then this tells me that the acceleration that I'm after is going to be 1.49 meters per second squared, with an error of 0 0.02 meters, or 0 0.03 meters per second squared. Uh, the y-intercept is pretty close to zero. It should be about zero for measuring the time since release, uh, but these are good data, and we can go ahead and use these to determine our coefficient of kinetic friction using the equations in the lab manual. That should be everything you need to go ahead and make two measurements of the coefficient of kinetic friction. Go ahead, complete the experiment, and upload your results to the E-Class quiz.